Yeah. Howdy folks, this is Shane. Today I'm doing a critical and in-depth review of the Boss Katana 100 amplifier. This particular amplifier is the single 12 inch speaker version. It also comes in a 212 version as well as a head. Firstly, a huge thanks to my friend Rob for allowing me to borrow his amp. I think it's actually really, really cool. This review will cover just about everything in terms of the amplifier itself, so hopefully it's helpful. If it is, please give it a thumbs up. I absolutely appreciate that. Not everything I'm gonna say is positive, but on the most part, I've had a really pleasant experience using this amp, especially after using the Mustang GT series stuff. This amp wipes the floor with those. I've gone ahead and I've set up four different patches on this particular amp, and you can access them from going from channel one, channel two, channel three, and channel four. It also has a loop function if you're running something in the loop. In combination with these four channels, if you hit the effects button, you can then turn on and off the effects that you put on each patch. And that's what's really good. So you can go to the second one, hit effects again, there's all your effects. Go to the third one, there's all your effects. Nice and simple. What I also love is there's no programming of the foot switch. Plug it in and that's what you get. Nice and simple, it's very intuitive and that's how it should be when you wanna do a gig, awesome. Let's go ahead and listen to the first patch, which is my clean tone. The best thing about this clean tone is it sounds rich and full sounding, much like a valve amp. I would put this up against my Blues Deluxe in terms of just sheer warmth and yeah, it absolutely sounds nice. Now I've set a booster up, let's try this. Also turn the reverb on and off as well. I've got some delay going on in the background there, so that's nice. Let's turn that off and put the reverb back on. Sounds cool. Preset number one was made using the clean channel on the amp just by using the dial. Over to channel two, which was made using the crunch channel. So realistically, in combination with either just setting up one patch using the effects or having four patches via this foot switch, you can actually set yourself up for either different guitars or just different levels of gain, which is how I've got it currently set up. Now you might be screaming at the computer or phone or whatever you're watching this on and saying, how come you didn't use the software to set this up? Two main reasons. I have three computers at this house, two Windows 10 computers, and a Mac running the latest Sierra, which has been out for roughly seven to eight months as of filming this video. After doing some Google searches, I found the software that I needed. I went to the Boss site and it said Windows software is unavailable. I don't know how long this has been the case. There's some sort of security flaw or patch with their software or some sort of incompatibility with the new Windows 10 updates. So it's currently not even available. You can't even get an older version, which totally sucks. 
I thought to myself, man, I'm lucky, I've got a Mac, let's go over and plug it in and use that. There's no software compatibility with Sierra and it's been out for seven or eight months. I can't believe it. If you're running the prior version of Mac, that's fine. The scary thing is, if you were to buy one of these amps right now, as of today, and you have a Windows 10 computer or the latest Mac, you can't actually access the software. You have to just use the buttons and controls on the amp, which is okay, but to get the full functionality of this amp, you're gonna struggle. This is something that nobody tells you. I hope this is informative. If you're thinking about buying one of these amps right now, you'll take it home and you'll be pretty happy with it on the most part, but you won't be able to get into the software that's inside of the amp and mess with any of the effects. All of these effects were made using the presets on the amp. This is a huge disadvantage and I'm really shocked that it's taken seven or eight months and there's no new Mac software available. I know a lot of people will say, oh, you shouldn't upgrade your Mac software or whatever, but if you were to go and buy a Mac right now or even seven months ago, the latest software will be on that computer. So Boss slash Roland really need to get their act together and start releasing the software a whole lot quicker. Seven to eight months delay or lag is unacceptable. Another huge problem is on their website, it just says this software is unavailable. It doesn't actually go into details. I had to scrimmage through forums to work this out. There either must have been some huge glitch or some other huge flaw. It would have been great if they could at least allow you to download older versions of the software just to get you going. As of filming this video right now, this is the biggest flaw with the amp. If you were to go buy one of these amps, you can't actually access the stuff internally via your computer. It's a huge thumbs down there for me. But if it's taken seven or eight months and they still haven't updated their Mac software, I don't know, man, you really, to get this to work right now, you only have to have a specific and older version of iOS on the Mac. Not cool. Over to the third preset that I made. This is slightly higher gain using the crunch channel and I've also added an octave effect to it as well. This is bridge pickup in humbucker mode on my mate and master sound. <laughs> The octave attracts extremely well, even when you bend. <laughs> And now with the octave effect off. It's a great tone. Over to my fourth preset now, and I use the lead channel on the amplifier for this one. Check this out. itself. 
Another positive is this, even without actually being able to get into the amp and editing it on the computer, it still feels extremely great to play. Under the hands, it feels amazing. It actually feels like a really great clean channel with various different types of effects on it. Even though I'm using different channels on the amp, in terms of the crunch channel, the lead channel, and the clean channel, it still feels legit. Another question you might be asking is, is the Boss Katana 100 loud enough to gig with? Absolutely it is. Last Sunday I heard Rob, my friend who owns this amp, use it at a jam. We were all at a jam. It was plenty loud. It cut through the mix like nobody's business. It actually also cut through the mix better than the GT200, which was also there. I found like the Fender Mustang GT200 was more low end frequencies and not enough punch. This absolutely cuts through the mix. The amp I would compare this to in a live situation, both volume and feel wise would be a PB Bandit 112 with an upgraded speaker. The speaker in the Boss Katana amp is great. It really has that low end thump. And I'm not just talking about bass frequencies, but I'm actually talking just about note punch in the mids, in that lower mids area. It actually feels really huge. <laughs> Let's try the different power settings on the amp now. Let's give this a shot. We've been on a 100 watt mode and this is still a 100 watt mode. watts. So 0.5 watts is actually less loud than my current speaking voice, which may be a little louder than normal due to the volume of this amp at 100 watts, but that's what I'm getting at. You can absolutely play this at home at 0.5 watts and not annoy the neighbors. Back to 50 watts now. I have a feeling what Boss have done with this 50 watt mode is just make it half as loud as the 100 watt mode. You might be thinking, isn't that just the way that it would be? Actually, it's not. A 50 watt amp and a 100 watt amp running the same speaker might not be that different in volume. It's how much clean headroom you get, but this actually has what at least appears to be a 50% reduction in volume. Back to 100 watt mode now. <laughs> And now with my volume control down. All the way up. This particular amp responds extremely well to using your volume control on your guitar. One thing I noticed with the Fender Mustang V2 amp, so the older version, as much as I absolutely love those amps, is in comparison to an actual valve amp or even a PV Bandit, when you turn your volume control down, it doesn't clean up the same way. It still cleans up, but you sort of have to turn it, your volume control a little bit further to get the same results. The Boss Katana feels about right. It actually feels pretty much like I was either playing my Bandit or my Blues Deluxe with pedals, for example. It responds the same way with the volume control, which is great. It's very familiar. All this talk of the PV Bandit as a comparison, let's compare it. Let's do a quick shootout now between the Boss Katana and the PV Bandit in terms of taking external effects. I've got my pedal board hooked up right now, so we're gonna kick on both the Royal Flush Overdrive, we're gonna use the left side of that, as well as the Wampler Tumnus, which is kinda like a clon. 
We're also gonna turn on the tape echo pedal from Wampler as well, just to see how both the amps respond. In my personal experience over the years using Klon pedals and Klon style pedals, most digital modeling amps don't take that pedal very well. They'll do things with the tube screamer that's pleasing to the ear, but when you try a Klon, it can get a little bit fizzy and weird. So we're gonna try that on both amps and see how it sounds. This is the Boss Katana with the left side of the Royal Flush on. Over to the Bandit. Sounds different, but also sounds fantastic. And now with the left side of the Royal Flush on, as well as the Wampler Tonus Bridge Pickup Boss Katana. <laughs> Sounds great. Over to the Bandit, same thing. I should point out that my PV Bandit has an Eminence Texas heat speaker in it as well. If my PV had the stock speaker, it probably wouldn't fit as favorably as what the Boss Katana does with pedals right now. For those who haven't listened to my podcast, you probably won't realize that I think the best mod you can make to an amp is swapping out the speaker. If I was to own this Boss Katana, I wouldn't do it. There's no way. With the PV Bandit, I think upgrading the speaker is a huge bonus. And same with the Mustang 3 amps. I was a huge advocate for putting in a different speaker and getting a much better, rounder and fuller sound. That's not to say that those amps don't sound good. They absolutely sound good, but just for personal taste and to get that extra bit of oomph and fatness and volume out of the amps, a speaker change is great. I think this is evident by showing you how great the Katana sounds against the PV Bandit that does have a bit of a boutique speaker, so to speak. So, that's what you're gonna get. You're gonna get a good sound straight away and you don't have to go fiddling around with speakers. One more time on the Bandit. <laughs> Boss Katana. On a second listen right now, I feel like both amps are pretty much even in terms of tone, just very different to each other. Whichever one you like the best would be the best amp for you. In terms of physical size, the Boss Katana is about the same size as a Mustang 3, so it's actually smaller than a PV Bandit 112, or at least the Red Stripe model that I have. In terms of weight, the Katana is relatively light. It's nowhere near as heavy as a PV Bandit or a Blues Deluxe or anything like that, but it is slightly heavier than the Mustang 3. If you can't tell, I absolutely love the speaker that they've decided to put in the Katana, and I'm assuming that the majority of the weight in that amp is actually that. The magnet is actually quite big, and it looks like the real deal. Usually when it comes to speakers, the bigger the magnet is, the more low end they can handle, and generally the better and louder they sound. Take the Swamp thing for an example. That particular magnet is huge, and it has the best low end response. I'm not saying this is the case in 100% of circumstances, but on the most part, judge a speaker by its magnet, unless, of course, it's using neodyniums, but anyway, that's a whole other topic. All in all, I think the Boss Katana would be a great amp for someone who just likes to set up their sound and forget about it. That's where its strengths is. 
Another positive about the Katana is the foot switch is extremely sturdy and strong and it's simple to use and intuitive. What can I say, they got that absolutely right. Another plus is the Katana also handles pedals extremely well, so another tick there. Having a power attenuator on the amp is also awesome. You can run it at 100 watts, 50 watts, 0.5 watts, so less than one watt, and it also goes onto a standby mode as well. This makes it easy to use at home at 0.5 watts so you don't annoy anybody. Take it to a small gig, run it at 50 watts, which has still got a bit of a punch once you start to wind it up. And then you can run it on 100 watts for when you want to peel the paint off the walls. For those who like to run stuff in the effects loop, you can do that as well. The only downside I see of these amps right now is the fact that I can't get the software to work on both a Windows 10 computer and a Mac. And I'm a computer nerd. That's what I did for years. And not being able to access the software or see any relevant messages actually on their boss website is a huge downer. I wasted probably an hour an hour and a half looking for software that I couldn't find. The biggest flaw I see with this amp as of right now is the software. If you already have the software, you're laughing, but if you don't, you can't get it. Go over to the Boss website and check it out. So in terms of a detailed review of what you can do with the functionality on a computer, I can't do it. I just can't do it and that totally sucks. I'm not gonna revert to an older operating system just to access an amp. Move with the times, get your engineers working on it if you haven't already boss, but I think this is a huge thing that may hinder or hurt sales if people start talking about this. That said, all in all, I'm giving this amp probably about an eight and a half out of 10. I like the fact that it's light, but not too light. It still feels like a good quality amp. The speaker in there is killer. It's absolutely loud enough to be used live. The effects, even without accessing a computer, are very usable. Storing patches is as simple as walking over to the amp and holding down either one, two, three, or four, depending on what channel you want to use, and then it saves and you're done. The foot switch is awesome. It handles pedals extremely well. So all in all, I'm giving this the big double thumbs up. I think it's a great amp. Is there one of these in my future? Hmm, maybe the 212. I'll see how we go. <laughs> Thanks again for watching folks. If you do have any comments, questions, or suggestions about this amplifier, please let me know and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. A huge thanks again to my friend Rob for allowing me to borrow his amp. I absolutely appreciate it. Thanks so much, mate. I think you got yourself a great amp. You can either just use the internal effects once you set it up, if you can actually access it on a computer, or you can just run your external effects into it and it sounds fine. Unlike the Mustang 3, where I personally feel its strength is with its own patches and presets within the amplifier when you want to use pedals, this particular amp seems to handle external effects awesomely, so good stuff. If you went ahead and bought this amp quite some time ago, odds are you probably have some working version of the software, but I urge you to go over to the Boss site as of this video and see if you can actually download it, because I can't. Let me know your thoughts on the Boss Tone Studio software as well. I'd like to hear what you can do with it and post in the comments so all the folks watching or who might not actually have the software will get a little bit more information. I'll pin the most relevant comment. Thanks again for watching, my name's Shane. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell and also click like if you can, I absolutely appreciate that. It helps the channel grow. Catch you soon, see ya.